Hey everyone, welcome back to our second day of Wrapped in Grace, the birth story that changes everything. Um, it does change us. It changes, it changes how life works. It changes our hope. And I think every year this story changes me and I hope that it changes you. I'm, I love to be reminded of the way God connects the pieces of the story to unfold his grace for us and his redemptive love, how he, how he takes what's humble and lifts it up, how he takes what's broken and makes it whole. Um, it is such a fun story, and I'm just um, really glad that you've chosen to spend this time um, reading it with me during this very, very busy season. We're going to read today from Luke chapter 1, the account of um, Mary's Mary's visit by the angel Gabriel. As we read through Wrapped in Grace, we will read through the entire biblical narrative of the birth story. Um, we'll do all of Matthew and Luke, so stick around and we'll get through that by the time we get to Christmas. We're going to start today with a little over 2,000 years and nine months ago. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Oh, you guys, I love that story. I love that the angel thought Mary, Mary had enough background to understand that these confirming statements verified his presence, verified the message that he was bringing to Mary. It mattered that Joseph was a descendant of David. It mattered that, that this, this king would sit on the throne of his father David and would reign over Jacob's descendants. His kingdom would never end. Mary knew about Jacob's descendants. She knew that she was one of Jacob's descendants. She knew that there was a promise that Messiah would come and reign and his kingdom would never end. Those were pieces of her story. Those were things that she knew. So those verifying statements by Gabriel gave her the courage and the faith to say, I am your servant. May it be done to me. I, I love her faith. And I love that her faith wasn't just blind. I love that it wasn't just some little girl who was pretty, who got to have God's baby. It was a girl who understood the story and understood God's work in the world and, and knew that God could use her to keep telling a story. I love that Mary also was willing to let go of her plans a little bit to do this really hard thing because it wasn't going to be easy. To get pregnant and not be married? How is that going to happen? But her old cousin Elizabeth, her old relative, I don't know if it was her cousin, her her relative that was way past menopause was going to have a baby and that was verification for her that God could do whatever he said. God was bigger than the circumstances and if he could 
if he could manage a birth story for Elizabeth, who was past conce conceiving and who was said to be barren, he could manage her birth story. And she was good with that. We talked yesterday about how we are going to, um, how we're going to live with all the plans we have of December, but still carve out time to remember Jesus. And um, I think Mary is a great example for us of um, loosening up on her plans a little bit to do the things in her life that God was calling her to do. Here's a little reflection for today for us to think about. Mary was an ordinary teenager planning her wedding. God's, uh, God's announcement interrupted all of that. Heaven stood in her doorway and history was changed because she said yes. Her life plans became secondary to God's plans. It's easy to walk through life, especially at Christmas time, believing that our plans are non-negotiable. But what if part of what God wants to teach us through Mary's story is that being sensitive to his leading means loosening our grip on our plans a little bit? And here's our journaling question. Use the space below to list those plans that feel non-negotiable for you. Then give your list to God and be willing to exchange your plans for his when he asks you to. Hmm. I don't know what those are. What those are. I don't know what they'll be for me. But he doesn't ask us not to plan. He asks, he asks us to not hold too tightly to the plan. Just in case there's a neighbor or a family member or a baby that needs to be held. Um, let's, let's keep our plans, but let's, let's put them in the hands of the one who is writing the story and who promises a really good ending to the story, whether our plans um, unfold perfectly in our heads or not. Um, let's, let's let Mary be an example to us as we also are a part of this great story. So fun, a little bit shorter today. These, as I said earlier, these weekdays are much shorter. Um, I'm, I'm excited to be back with you again tomorrow. We'll talk about Mary and um, the time she gets to, um, oh, more about Mary's faith to say yes, actually. And then in a couple days, we'll talk about her um, arrival at Elizabeth's house and the song that she sings. So we'll end the week with Joseph and Joseph's faith to say yes, because another huge part of this story. Um, so have a good day, you guys, and I will see you back here next time.